Boston. Well, let's turn to Adam Giambroni and ask Adam. Uh, Adam, is Daryl Dexter going to be history after tonight? It's a big, uh, big breakthrough for the NDP. But uh, give us an idea on what you think will happen tonight. Yeah. Well, it was a big breakthrough back in uh, 2009 when Daryl Dexter was elected the premier. It wasn't really a huge surprise that NDP had come close a couple of other times. In fact, there had been a tie in the legislature uh, a few years before, and that had required uh, some uh, really research going back and to figure out who should be government, and it, and it wasn't the NDP in that case. Uh, Daryl Dexter spent the f four years really changing politics in Nova Scotia. He has uh, sat more days uh, than any of the, uh, the governments in the last couple decades pr previous to the NDP government, bringing in new legislation. Balanced the books for part of the mandate. Uh, it slipped back into deficit, but I think overall has uh, really brought in a, a new fiscal arrangement for uh, Nova Scotia. But you know, like a lot of premiers across the province, he is being, uh, he has to live with the current economic uh, climate, in which case people are pretty uh, grumpy across the country. And we've seen this in other elections, some premiers going on to uh, hang on, uh, some being turf. So, it, you know, the polls don't look too good tonight, uh, but, you know, we just heard the history lesson and history's on uh, Dexter's side. Adam, it's Warren here. How you doing? I wanted to ask, hey. everybody looks at these provincial results to try and see what they put. 10 federally and so you had Trudeau's campaign down there for McNeil Bailey's talked about his relationship with Harper but Mulcair has not been seen uh, since well before the campaign started and he hasn't been mentioned much either is there a reason for that is there a feeling that the federal leader is not an asset in the way perhaps the other relationships are well, you know, it's it's interesting. In the case of uh, the federal uh, conservatives, obviously the prime minister, a big name. Uh, one of the things that, and of course, Justin Trudeau has come on with a splash. Whether he keeps that splash is the big question. Mulcair, as we've discussed here uh, on a couple of shows, uh, has you know struggled a little bit with the name recognition. Uh, these elections aren't going to be determined by the federal party leaders. Frankly, uh, Justin Trudeau can come down as much as he wants to Nova Scotia. I'm not sure that necessarily helps. Um, Daryl Dexter has run a strong, capable campaign. Being the government, he has a lot of advantages. At the end of the day, a lot of this is going to come down to uh, what people think of the government as a whole, uh, the fiscal decisions they've made, the new legislation, and there's been a lot of it. Uh, and, you know, that may work uh, in some cases in Dexter's favor and others against it. But I suspect if you actually, you know, get down to a detailed polling, those issues, whether it's a single legislative issue, for example, the pesticide ba ban, that may make some people happy, may frustrate other people. Uh, you know, when you make a lot of these, this this bring in a lot of this legislation, you have the ability to both uh, make a lot of people happy, but you can also, over time, uh, make a lot of people upset. Now, I'm one of those people that thinks the legislature should sit less because then they can do less, but that's just me. Um, the highlights of, tell us the good things that Dexter's done over the last four years that you think uh, would give people reason to vote for him. We'll leave it, to, leave it at that. Well, I think the, the big one is, of course, uh, the economics, right? You've seen a, a very, people had some questions, I think, about the NDP economically. Daryl Dexter has been the, probably one of the most pragmatic uh, premiers fiscally. Uh, he brought in one of only, uh, the Nova Scotia budget has virtually, has only been balanced seven times uh, since 1950. And I think three of those times uh, were under an NDP government. So if you look at that, uh, you see some strong fiscal management, perhaps not what some people might think, but actually, for a party in Nova Scotia uh, that, you know, as we heard from the history lesson, it's really a meat and potatoes type of uh, politics. You've also seen uh, improvements in health care. You've seen some issues around, for example, energy, uh, working very hard to get uh, connection up into Quebec and into uh, Labrador to get uh, less expensive energy to uh, Nova Scotia. Very important. Saving a number of large industrial establishments and, of course, working with the federal government to bring the ship, another shipbuilding contract. Very important well, in to Halifax. And in, in, in the end, that could be what hurts them most uh, with, with the corporate welfare. Adam, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for, for joining us from New York today. Safe travels back home. I uh, want to Thank turn you, now to a, a native Nova Scotian joining us now. He's a longtime politician, former Liberal Cabinet Minister in Ottawa, David Danewall. And uh, Mr. Danewall, you've been hearing a lot of non-Nova Scotians talk about Nova Scotia. How do you see the lay of the land today? Why does this matter to people across the rest of the country. Let's start there. Well, I think it will have an impact uh, federally. 
I think Stephen McNeil in Nova Scotia has uh, demonstrated throughout the campaign and prior to the campaign an enormous uh, growth personally. Uh, Stephen has uh, been a good steward of his caucus. He has been a good steward in terms of the policies that they've put forward. And he's also been able to attack uh, the governing party in Nova Scotia on a whole host of things. Uh, for instance, the Irving uh, Shipyard, a $25 billion contract. The government of Nova Scotia provides $300 million. Uh, this didn't engage Nova Scotians. It enraged Nova Scotians. This, this was a, a contract where the feds were buying ships for $26 billion. They didn't need to put in well, the money for Irving. That's the way most of the small and medium-sized businesses in Nova Scotia uh, looked at this particular dossier. In fairness uh, to the government, uh, the, three, uh, the $300 million was, was guaranteed based upon the number of jobs that would be created. And thus far, very few jobs have been created as a result of that. So there's been an enormous growth on the part of Stephen McNeil. The fact that uh, Justin Trudeau did make uh, two appearances in Nova Scotia really bowed uh, the party very well. And I think it will have a very positive impact in terms of federal seats in Nova Before Scotia. Before I let Warren jump in, I just want to ask you this uh, quickly. Nova Scotia is on the receiving end of equalization. Anyone, nobody wants their province to be on that. It's also a net exporter of people. I think people are Nova Scotia's greatest export. Most people in the province would like to reverse both of those, have the province doing well. Uh, is that, are those the big reasons that this matters, that uh, province that I think of as one of the, the sole centers of Canada, that's why it matters to the rest of the country? Well, we were part of Confederation way back in 1867. And the history, both in terms of free trade, what it has done, uh, in terms of Nova Scotia and our economy, has been well documented. But in terms of going forward, for any government, uh, Liberal, Tory or NDP, we have to be cognizant of the fact that there has been a large uh, immigration outflow. And we have to work very cooperatively with the federal government in terms of getting greater numbers of the share of, uh, of new Canadians that are coming to our country. And thus far, we've improved under the Dexter government. And I think you have to give them credit for that. But it's been small potatoes. David, I wanted to ask you about something that people across the country perhaps don't understand, which is the, the dynamic <clears throat> between Halifax and the rest of the province. And how does that play out tonight? It's two solitudes. Uh, you, you have urban and you have rural. Urban essentially is Halifax. Rural or quasi-rural is the rest of the province. And those citizens have been enraged in terms of what has been taking place. Uh, hospital closures, uh, emergency rooms have had to shut down. In some instances for very valid reasons, but nevertheless they have been on the, the giving end of, of taking all of that kind of things. The jobs have not materialized in terms of the quantities that we would all want in Nova Scotia. And as an elected leader, you have to bear the brunt of that responsibility. It may not be fair at the time, but nevertheless, that's what you're elected to do. And I think uh, Dexter, who I believe is a good man, a solid citizen, uh, high integrity, uh, he's going to have a difficult time in maneuvering uh, this election, even though there is 25% undecided. Yeah, that is the, uh, the big sticking point tonight, 25% undecided. Well, will they turn out? Will they turn out across Nova Scotia? Will they turn out in Yarmouth, which is where we're looking at right now?